But then my ultimate goal is, of course, um, to give Chris that battle and to actually win the show. And this, I've, I've never been in this mindset before where I actually believe that that's a possibility. If I showcase my physique there, just like I did at the Arnold with the perfect peak, but with the improvements I made and this, like I'm feeling it right now as I'm, as I'm saying this, this, this energetic excitement for the show that I've not had at this level before, that I will take into the show and just showcase everything that I have. I think the possibility of winning that show is just there. Our next guest turned the Classic Physique division on its ear this past March by winning the Arnold Classic over the number two, number three, and number four ranked Classic Physique competitors in the world, Ramon Dino, Urs Kalasinski, and Brian Ansley. He has been viewed as the literal embodiment of Classic Physique since he turned pro in 2017 and now has a chance to make an even more monumental statement as he takes the stage at the 2024 Olympia for a chance against the legend himself, five-time Classic Physique Olympia champion Chris Bumstead. The man they call Vintage Genetics, Wesley Vissers. He joins us now on RX Muscle's Iron Road to the Olympia, powered by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. Thank you for that incredible intro. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And I'm super, super excited for that incredible Mr. Olympia competition. Let's do it. Well, Wesley, crazy to think we are literally now about a month away four weeks away how are you feeling a month out from the 60th year anniversary of the olympia yeah i just feel great i mean a lot of people they ask me the same question but with a presumption aren't you feeling the pressure aren't you feeling nervous because you got to prove yourself now against of course the best like the official olympic games of bodybuilding you know the olympia so it's uh, people view it as a different show compared to the Arnold. But honestly, the feeling I have is like an exciting feeling. It's like finally the effort and investment I put into this prep will be taken seriously. So you're actually going to the Olympia knowing that people will be watching you. So everything you put into it will be maximized at the Olympia by everybody taking it as seriously as possible, which means I will get the comparison with the top guy, of course, Chris Baum said, which is my ultimate goal to be compared to him, which is what I also wanted uh, to happen at the R Classic, being compared to Ramon, which happened, and now we see also the outcome of that. So who knows what that will mean for the Olympia, but all in all, I feel incredible, and I feel very excited for the show. Well, obviously, you're scoring a monumental win at the Arnold Classic. And I, and I go back to that victory because that really is such a threshold landmark moment for you. Going into the show, you know, I had asked you in the uh, Meet the Athletes event about coming into the show and, in a sense, for the duration of your career, maybe feeling a bit overlooked as far as the landscape of classic physique is concerned. You know, going back to that prep, into that you know, build up against the world number two, the world number three, Ramona, or is knowing that you had a chance to really do something special, you know, how much of that factor in going into that show, knowing you had an absolute chance to make that kind of a statement? Yeah, it, it, it was a very special prep because I came off the Olympia and then I did Romania Pro one week later because I wanted to qualify mm -hmm. immediately. So I had that done. So that pressure was already gone. And yep. then right after the Olympia, actually at the Olympia, I was invited to do the R Classic. Literally <laughs> at the Olympia, I decided I'm going to do the R Classic. Um, and I knew the R Classic was pretty close to the Olympia time-wise. So the prep for the Arnold would have started with a quite lean shape anyway. And I know that I do very well when I start out lean. It's only going to get better. Uh, especially now that I learn my body and my coach knows my body as well. We're never going to flatten out ever again. The only benefit it will have is more conditioning and more, more of a fresh look to the stage instead of going from deep, deep in the off season and then dieting for 20 plus weeks 
it will show a different kind of physique at the end than when you are already very lean and you only have to diet for like eight weeks, for example. So that already was a big benefit. But also, as you mentioned, the the roster at the Arnold Classic was a lot smaller than the Olympia, yet the quality was pretty much the same, except that Chris wasn't there. What did right. this mean? In my head, it meant, okay, this means you will for sure get a comparison with the top guys because I... I was already confident I would be in the first call out. But my goal, to be very honest, was I want to beat one of the guys who beat me at the Olympia, at least one of them, so I can move my ranking upwards for the next Olympia, for example. So my goal was to beat one of those guys. But once I got into that first call out, that's when the thing started to become clear. But right. I also knew that before even stepping on stage, I felt very good and confident that this was my best shape ever, but you don't know what the gap was between what I normally look like and what they want to see of me to put me against the top guy. So how big was that gap? So I did make quite some improvements from the Olympia package to the Arnold package. And it, you know, when me and my coach analyze the different physiques, the difference wasn't that substantial, but the peak was so good that everything finally came together. Like the fullness, the conditioning, and the freshness of the physique and my confidence knowing I don't really have anything to lose here. So I just right. had fun on stage. And, you know, I knew I was in the first call out. So I finally got what I always wanted to stand next to next to Urs, Rion, Ramon, just to stand next to them. And then in my head, I was like, at least now I can analyze after the show, okay, what are the differences? What can I improve? Not knowing that, that I would actually beat all of them, which was right. my actual dream come true. So, yeah, the prep was uh, very special for me to go through, and it taught me a lot on how to be also more confident for all the other shows in the future. You, you know, when we talk about your physique in particular, right? I mean, ever since you turned pro, there have been, again – you are kind of like in, in this elite class, uh, exclusive class rather, with the likes of a Breon, with the likes of a Terrence Ruffin, with the likes of a Seabum, in the sense that you are part of that original generation of classic yeah. physique Olympians. That said, you're still you, Breon, um, Terrence to an extent, even though he's not competing at this Olympia, Bumstead, you are all still in very much in that elite category. But with you, I feel as if your physique has gone through so many different iterations. You working with your coach, Stefan, what were you able to nail for this Arnold Classic? And now, obviously, you've had a few months to look back, fine tooth comb, you know, in terms of your prep for the Olympia. What are some of the qualities that you saw for this package in terms of the fullness, in terms of the condition where you see to yourself, all right, this look, maybe with those little fine refinements, give us the best shot at a title at the Olympia this uh, next month? And so the biggest difference between the Arnold and all my other shapes was basically, and it's funny if you see from the beginning of me working with Stefan until now, you can see me really develop as a bodybuilder should ideally develop. So our first Olympia 2021, I was very dry, but I was very skinny, flat, you know, I'm a tall guy, so I need the volume. So we already learned, okay, you can get to the conditioning. That's no problem anymore. Not, not a question anymore, but, you know, we do need to keep that fullness there. But because I was coaching myself before, I was actually forcing myself down into a very low caloric state in order to achieve conditioning because I was very hard on myself. But when you get a coach, he's more intelligent and more objective in this aspect so we could actually bump up my calories raise my metabolism give refeeds here and there when necessary and throughout the years like 2021 i was 11th then 2022 i actually i think we went eighth uh, we had eighth yes yeah and then we went to seventh place yep so we went higher and higher and the difference was that my conditioning remained good. I'm, I'm always in shape, but the fullness and the proportion between the lower and the upper body kept improving because he also uh, reviews my training, the way I especially work my lower body because the upper body has never been an issue. 
And throughout the years, as a bodybuilder, you slowly develop those body parts and you slowly develop the way to die down and keep those body parts full towards your best shape on stage. But then you get the Arnold where everything came together even more, where we learned, well, you're pretty close to the weight cap anyway. You don't have to put on pounds of mass. So you might as well just start a prep leaner so we can extend or actually rather slow down the weight loss per week to allow your physique to stay fresh and more full. Because as I mentioned, because I'm a tall guy, if I die right. down too quickly, I will look too yep. scrawny. So I, I need that dominance, which is which is one of my strong points on stage. Like even when you look at Ramon on his on his own, you're like, this is a champion. I mean, it's full, round, conditioned. But when you stand next to him and you're literally like a lot wider, you're bigger, you take up more space, and you have the conditioning and the presentation, all of a sudden, the differences are getting more clear on why I won the competition and not Ramon. So it's, it's and then for the Olympia, you know, the most true answer, but also kind of a boring answer is to do the same thing again, to get just a bit more conditioning, which I know is possible, a bit more fullness, because remember, and this is a funny statistic, my body weight for the 2018 Mr. Olympia mm. was higher than winning the Arnold Classic at the, at the beginning of this year. So, Unreal. Yeah, so my, even though the weight cap throughout those years has increased for everybody, right. not so much yeah. for me because I'm a tall guy, but it still increased with two pounds, but I never needed the two pounds up until, yeah, I, I've never needed those extra pounds yet. But for this uh, prep, I can already tell you that I, of course, take pictures every single day, uh, send them to my coach as a check-in, and you can see that my conditioning is better at this point than it was for the Arnold, but I do weigh about three and a half pounds more compared to the Arnold as well. So we are heavier at this stage, but also leaner. So I know for sure that we will present a fuller physique which looks even more fresh on my frame with better proportions but with conditioning that's either equal or better than the arnold so that's what bodybuilding is making small increments in changes and showcase that on the stage without taking any risks so the prep i mean the peak week is when a lot of bodybuilders sometimes try to take more more of a risk to look better but we know exactly what we need to do. We just coast into the show. We you know I'm a very good at being a low stress, calm guy, which really helps, you know, just freshen up your physique in the last week, drop off all the fatigue, all the tiredness, especially because I'm a father of two children. Yes. When you're away from that situation for a little bit, <laughs> your sleep and your routine can be even more perfect compared to being at home. And um, I think that will really help uh, during the last week of this uh, contest prep to bring my absolute best shape ever at this uh, Mr. Olympia. Well, let's go back to um, this is going to be the third time that you're competing in the, at the Vegas Olympia. Um, and the reason that I bring that up is because I remember what year was it? The 2020 Olympia. You're talking to Dave Palumbo before that Olympia and you're yeah. talking about your first experience. Uh, which was in 2018, and how there were some unforeseen conditions, right? Vegas being very dry, very hot. There is an acclimation period when it comes to adjusting to Vegas. And, you know, you, mm -hmm. you've seen how that, that dryness, that heat can mess with the bodybuilder. You see many times where bodybuilders come in off because they were unable to meet those, you know, conditions or at least the adjustments needed for those conditions. Obviously, now this is going to be your third time competing in Vegas. You know what to expect. You're, you know, you're working with a coach that you've seen a lot of success under. Is that something you've kind of built into the plan, at least that last week, in terms of you're going to arrive in Vegas? These are some of the things that have happened before. This is how we're going to avoid it going forward. Yeah, definitely. So the biggest change is in, back in 2018, I was a young guy. We traveled with a family. I had a different coach. So I took my hands off of the entire process, and I trusted too many different people who did their best for me, but weren't really as versed into what a bodybuilder needs 
at, at a different location to keep the routine in check. So my goal is to take the routine I have here at home and take it with me to a location in Las Vegas. So I like the week that I, pretty much when I won Romania, I already booked my apartment and the flight and the rental car <laughs> to, to ensure. So literally a week after the Olympia of last year. So to ensure that the apartment is nice and close to everywhere I need to be, has every amenity that I need, like, of course, the big kitchen, air, you know, working air conditioning, stuff like this, um, to make sure that everything that I'm used to doing here, I'm able to do there as well. So, yeah, you, you mentioned in 2018 I made a lot of mistakes because it was my first time in Las Vegas, so you're persuaded to look at the strip, the casinos, to walk around, to do yes. sightseeing, because we knew that we booked, you know, it, it's a big investment, so you don't book many days after the show. So pretty much one day after the show, you already go home because it's quite expensive. So we knew that if we don't check out Las Vegas now, we don't have the chance afterwards. So right. it kind of was a mistake, of course, because you're there for the show. But you're there walking there in like 40 plus Celsius, uh, which is uh, very hot. <laughs> like uh, <laughs> someone uh, putting a, a hot a blow dryer on your face the whole time when you're walking outside. But uh, luckily, that I think that Olympia was in September. And now it's, of course, October, which yeah. it's a little less hot. And uh, we've had some very hot days in the Netherlands, actually, for a pretty long time, which feels, in my opinion, it's in the Netherlands, the heat is the most, it feels the worst of almost any country for some reason. So it's like a really, you know, it really, the heat really presses down on you. And uh, so I'm used to that. But then again, I'm not going to get into the heat uh, when, when I don't need to. Because I have, uh, we're going there with the core team, which basically is just my partner, Marley, of course, the mother of my children, and uh, the cameraman. So to give it as small as possible. But whenever I need something from the grocery store that I happen to forget or need something from somewhere, she's able to get it. And she will also be like the driver, like the, like I'm being treated like, uh, like a true, you know, basically guest that she drives around, which is, Really, she really has a managing role, which is what I always say. Bodybuilding might be looked at as an individual sport, but without people right. around you who support you, you're never going to get to the top. So it's really a team effort, which is uh, what I really love about this and that I've been able to be. I'm just very fortunate with the situation I'm in. So we, we keep it very simple, very small, and making sure that whatever I'm used to here back in the Netherlands, I can do in Las Vegas because I will, t <laughs> like the suitcases we're gonna take with us is like insane. I like usually five or six suitcases <laughs> to make sure all the food, the supplements, the kitchen uh, stuff, like everything, nothing will be missing from what I'm used to. So we can just repeat what I'm used to here. And I think that's the, that was the key to success also at the uh, Arnold Classic in Ohio. I did the exact same thing. So the less, variables the better the result will be yeah i was going to bring this up later on but you you brought it up and, and you know, i enjoy you know especially in this industry where you have someone as notable as yourself as accomplished as yourself take us behind the scenes take us behind the curtains you know you know, be very open about your family right you talk about marley yeah. and the role that she's played in your career you, you know you being a family man you being a father of two um and and all that comes along with it, right? We see your Instagram. We see that you're, you know, like we just we're seeing this now. Chris Bumstead, you're obsessed with being a father, which is a beautiful thing. I, I myself have, have a six year old. I know the feeling, and I know that yeah. you know when you go to the Olympia, you know you yourself, obviously, as much as you love them, you know you need your peace, you need your quiet. So they're going to be yeah. with uh with either your parents or with her parents, but obviously with Marley, exactly. who's going to be there for you and handling so much yeah. of it. You know, take us through that that balance, that family dynamic, you know, the role that Marley plays for you in your bodybuilding and your business and just an overall keeping it all together and how you as a father, you know, have been able to balance everything that comes along with being a father, being a family man and being a world class bodybuilder. Yeah, so the balance is a very tricky thing for a lot of people <laughs> and you, you really got to find it for yourself because you can't 
really explain it easily. You got to experience it and you got to put effort into creating that balance. So to give a practical example, like you can, I can choose as a bodybuilder, like being the professional bodybuilder, I'm going to the Olympia. That's the most important thing. So you take care of the children and I, I can't at this moment, but I'm not like that. I like to involve myself with them in any way I can, but it has to serve some kind of purpose for my prep as well. So to give an example, um, I need to take my steps, for example, every single day. I always keep mm -hmm. track of my watch. Yep. For example, 12,000 steps a day. Now, how do I achieve this? First, either me or Marley, we give uh, the children breakfast. And afterwards, we always go for a walk outside. Regardless of the weather, whether it's raining or sunny or it doesn't matter, we teach them just go outside and it's normal uh, to get wet every now and then. And that's how I think as well. I need to get those steps in, so I'm going to walk. So we're just going to do our morning walk of 20, 30 minutes. So I'm already spending time with them at that moment instead of just going to my room and do cardio all alone, which sometimes happens on my bike in the morning, but the walks are always part of my life. So I think a key thing in balance is at least spending time, like physical time with the family and you automatically talk to each other, you do playful things, you, you make sure that the children view you as the father who is actually present and not being on his own the whole time. And the same thing goes for uh, like um, dinner. Like I like to make dinner for everybody. So of course I make it for them first and then later I make it for myself, but at least... I'm the one then giving them their food and um, trying to have them eat a little bit healthy, include some vegetables that I like to eat myself, like rice here and there, <laughs> golden rice, of course. There you and go. It's just, fun. Yeah. it's just fun to see them try that. And then you have the walk after dinner, which we always do. So you have to spend some more time. But also some stuff like having children means they make a mess in the house. Like <laughs> I just finished my facet cardio. And then I'll usually let them play for like half an hour on their own. And of course, it results in one thing that there's going to be a, quite a mess on the floor with all their toys or, you know, Lego pieces everywhere. So then we just together clean it up. And I could be stressed about it because I want to have my breakfast, I'm hungry. Or I can think, and eh, this is just some extra effort, some extra calories, extra steps, which I don't have to do later on in the day. And it's, I spend some more time with the children, teach them that it's important to clean up and persuade them that it's a good thing to do, make it a little game. And this comes back every single day, which creates some kind of a balance. But the most important thing about all this is that Marley plays a way bigger role, especially during the prep as a parent than I do, because she is very creative into making every day fun for them. She either goes to the zoo or an amusement park mm. or a, a park in general or a playground, like almost every day there's something different going on for them, which gives them a very nice life to have. But That's this great. then is because of the Arnold Classic. After winning the Arnold, which then motivated Marley to take more of the role of the mother on herself instead of like that balance that people try to have today, like 50-50, mm. that each parent has to do the exact same thing for their children yeah. instead of like the old school way where usually the mom would do the most but winning the Arnold classic allowed for the financial situation to be so much better that marley doesn't have to work as much anymore in the gym so the classes she used to give the per personal training she used to give she can drop down a whole lot so several days in a week she's completely off from work which you can spend with the children which then gives me time to really focus on the bodybuilding side of things especially now during the prep as you mentioned before you cannot be 100% the perfect dad and 100% the perfect bodybuilder. You have to sacrifice something to be able to be at your best for the sport. So that's what I'm now able to do because of the R Classic victory. We've been able to expand our gym a lot because of it. Like a lot more new members are coming in, which creates some passive income. And this is just to give you a, a kind of a view behind the scenes of how a winning one competition as a bodybuilder can change your whole life situation. And it made us a lot more flexible in everything. Like 
for example, being able to do this podcast afterwards, do my workout and then some more work, which normally Marley would have to go to the gym herself to work in like a few hours before the Arnold, but now she doesn't, for example. So those things make my prep life a lot easier and it gives her more free time to spend time with the children as well. So that creates kind of a balance too. So yeah, it's just a very fortunate situation I'm in right now, which motivates me even more for the Olympia. No, it's incredible to hear because you know it's so. It, I I I love hearing stories about how people who you know have high demand lifestyles, successful lifestyles such as yourself, are able to manage, be present for their kids, be present for their family, and in the case of you, I mean, you going down to the bit about preparing dinner for your family. So I need to ask because we hear we always hear about the golden rice. What is golden <laughs> rice? How do you make? I've seen the color of it. Obviously, it is golden yeah. in texture and color. How do you make golden rice? So just a little teaser. Maybe very soon there will be coming a product that I'm going to sell, which teaches you how to make a lot of these recipes. So that's already a teaser for uh, very soon coming out. But the golden rice is one of those things you can you can teach, you can learn how to make. But to make it easy, just I would prefer to go for like a parboiled rice or something, a, a rice that's not so sticky. I personally prefer those because it more easily mixes with whatever you add into it. And the only thing you really have to do is add turmeric powder to it. Either dried turmeric powder or the turmeric root, which would be even more healthy. At the same time, it has antioxidant properties, anti-inflammatory properties, which I'm, of course, a fan of, like not just making it look good and taste better, but also at the same time providing the health benefits that it gives, which is the beauty about food and playing around with the ingredients. But all you have to do is just add like half a teaspoon of turmeric powder to your rice as it's cooking, and it will transform that color to golden. Now, I would advise to add a little bit of pepper and plenty of salt to give it like a more strong flavor, but whatever you prefer. But that's really the secret because you can also buy golden rice in the supermarket. Like in the Netherlands, you can literally buy the dried rice in golden form, but it's made with saffron, which is, of course, something different and way more expensive. Right. But turmeric yeah. actually adds more benefits. You can just buy a little tub of term turmeric powder, but don't buy the yellow one, buy the true deep orange golden one because that contains more of the phytonutrients that will actually give you more benefits compared to the cheaper version. So if we're gonna make golden rice, it needs to be worth the investment. So, you know, buy the good stuff. It, again, you being from the Netherlands, I I've always been curious as far as, you know, there's bodybuilding, there's bodybuilding centric countries, right? Uh, being in the Middle East just a few months ago in Dubai, you see how popular bodybuilding is in the Middle East in general and just the perception that they have of bodybuilders. In this country, in the United States, um, it's really not that pop. It is very much a niche sport. I'm curious in the Netherlands, obviously, you have immense popularity on social media, 850, almost 850,000 followers on Instagram, you've built up quite the brand for yourself with the vintage genetics, um, the brand in and of itself, clothing, you, you have your own gym. I, I'm curious just to know in the Netherlands, you know, what is the scene for bodybuilding? Not just as far as people who work out, people who bodybuild themselves, but follow competitive bodybuilding and outside of the gym scene, right? I mean, obviously I have to imagine any gym you walk into, people know who you are, but you walking around day-to-day -day life, um, do you get recognized or is it something like, you know, for, for instance, I'll start in a Samson Dowda and he's telling me how in England, he's just a big dude walking around in a tracksuit. <laughs> what is that like for you in the Netherlands? Yeah. So the Netherlands is also not really a bodybuilding country. Like if you compare it to Germany, which is right next to the Netherlands, Germany is a lot more hardcore with regards to bodybuilding because they of course also had more Olympians doing, uh, doing the show from Germany. But the Netherlands is quite niche, but ever since, and once again, this is where the Arnold Classic came in. Like I've been on TV quite some, quite a lot, a lot of times now in newspapers, on the radio, interviews, 
by Dutch media. They actually all come also to the gym to film me wow. because winning the Arnold means everybody knows who Arnold Schwarzenegger is. He's a yes. very popular name in the Netherlands. So remember when that Arnold Netflix documentary, the three part uh, was released. That's when I actually called me and to go to uh, the biggest talk show in the Netherlands on TV to talk about the bodybuilding side of Arnold and what makes it so special, what he meant for the bodybuilding and fitness world. So I went on TV then, gave a good impression. And after winning the show that he uh, hosts himself, that's when it really exploded. So not only people in the gyms recognize me, but also when I'm just walking down the street, they're like, hey, you're, you're the guy who won that show, right? Yeah. And you can see by their by how they look that they're not bodybuilders. Maybe they work out, but they're really not into the bodybuilding scene. But having won that show really made myself way more recognizable as Wesley Visser's the R Classic champ rather than the bodybuilder. So it it really uh, transformed my popularity in that regard as well, which is very nice. And also, especially in a neighborhood like the elementary school that my son now goes to is uh, on walking distance. So whenever I walk the dog or I walk with them, I yeah. walk past yeah. by the elementary school and they, because a local newspaper put me in there so many times, they all <laughs> know who I am as well. So they're all, they're always shouting at me like, hey, that's Wesley and uh, can you uh, flex your bicep like all these little children oh which is a lot God. of fun of course and then i then i then i always say make sure to eat your vegetables that's how you get those muscles <laughs> try to persuade them to eat healthy because if if there's any way i can make an impact on children as like with this physique is to show your muscles and then say what to do to get those muscles and that's eat healthy and i'm pretty sure that a lot of them will at least try for a little while and to put uh you know make their parents happy as well so <laughs> i always try to use it like that but it's very nice to now be recognized also beyond the kind of small bodybuilding scene in the netherlands but also by other people which is an amazing feeling yeah, I have to go back to that moment where you shook Arnold's hand on stage. And, you know, it, it's so funny because ever since you turned pro, you know, there have been the obvious comparisons, right? All you heard about is this kid who turned pro as the Royal London and he has this facial resemblance, but physique resemblance. He poses like Arnold and there were the obvious comparisons. So really, ever since you turned pro, there have been the built in conversations, comparisons when it comes to Arnold, right? You finally meet him, or I mean, I know you've met him before, but you finally meet him on stage as a champion, shake his hand, yeah. and there he makes that remark about Lou Ferrigno, and, and I think it's so funny because it, it looked as if it caught you off guard, it certainly caught, you know, the, the audience off guard, like, really? This is what he has to say? But, you know, you, you reflected back on that moment. Um, you know, growing up in Europe, in the Netherlands, you obviously knew Arnold Schwarzenegger as a champion bodybuilder. And ever since you picked up your first set of weights, you know, you saw what Arnold looked like as a bodybuilder. You all followed him as an actor. You know, last time I spoke to you, it was merely an hour after you won your championships. A lot of emotions at the moment. But now that you had some time and obviously, you, look, you mentioned it two, three times how that win has really changed a lot for your bodybuilding career, for your popularity, for your businesses, you know, how life-changing was it for you to have that on-stage conversation as a champion with someone you grew up idolizing? Yeah, so you're very right. At the moment that Arnold is standing there, you're overwhelmed by everything that's happening at that, at that moment in time because I was there next to Ramon, and then Bob Ciccarella was very good at making that moment very tense about who's going to win. Right. And I honestly thought, okay, I think they're going to give it to Ramon because you just you just don't know. Uh, you always think, well, if, if I'm second, that's already a super huge victory for me, beating everybody except number two in the world, basically. And, um, yeah, you just didn't know which way it was going to go. And then to actually win, and to hear the crowd's response and my own disbelief, I'm like, whoa, what just happened? And from there, it was like a whirlwind of things that happened really quickly for me. Because then, before you know it, you can already on the other side of the stage see Arnold walking up the stairs. You can see the trophies holding in his hand. 
and you're like you're trying to soak it all in but it's happening so quickly and before you know it you're standing there talking with him and he first of all giving me compliments about my posing and being a classic bodybuilder and um then of course the roof rigno <laughs> comparison which you know i still i think i mentioned this before but you know, Arnold would never admit anybody looking like him, even if you were literally a copy of him. He would still because that's his brand. Arnold is Arnold. It's, it's the, there's only yes. one of them, one of him. So of course he's gonna then say I'm somebody else. Uh, but I still took it as a compliment, as you know, still comparing me to a golden era bodybuilder, which I don't think he has ever done with anybody else specifically. Like especially because you know we all know Lou Rigno from Popping Iron. He was kind of being touted as the rival of Arnold in that documentary, which of course makes it a very big compliment for me to be compared to that kind of uh, enemy for, for him, basically. So he takes me seriously, at least. Um, but yes, Arnold has always been my childhood hero, icon. He, to me, is the ultimate classic physique. Yeah, just classic bodybuilder in general. Like th that, To me, he is what the whole division is based upon at least yes. that's what my belief has always been and that's what i've been striving for but then of course nowadays with the conditioning and the proportions of modern day but keeping that that inner that essential part of what classic bodybuilding is what arnold always had on stage that's what i always will bring with me to the stage as well so it it changed my mindset about the potential I have so much in the bodybuilding world in classic physique that, um, yeah, the, the, there is no better confirmation that you're doing well than to be rewarded with the champion award and his speech by Arnold himself. I mean, there's, there's nobody else that can mod <laughs> motivate me more than that. So I, whenever I, uh, you know, I don't really have doubts, but, whenever you're in the gym and you're struggling with a workout, I just think of that moment and it will pull me through so quickly because yeah, I, even if it's been a few months already, like almost six months, basically since winning that show, it still feels like an unbelievable thing. Like I still can't fully grasp what happened, but it did happen and it, it can really put forth a lot of energy from that fact that it happened, which makes me believe in myself so much more that it really is possible. What all those people have always told me that one day you will get there. My coach telling me if there's one show for you to win, it's going to be the Arnold Classic. So yes. he really persuaded me to uh, to do the Arnold to like multiple years. But now I felt, okay, now I'm really ready for it. And it was the perfect timing for it. So yeah, it changed not only my life outside of bodybuilding, but also as a bodybuilder you know, as a body word itself. So it, it really changed every aspect of it. And it's the biggest compliment I've ever gotten to be uh, rewarded the number one prize by Arnold himself. You know, you use the word mindset. And, and that's something that I, I was kind of debating myself as to whether or not I want to use that word only because it's so overused. But, you know, with that win, how does that shift your mindset psychologically for the Olympia? And, you know, I know every bodybuilder, whenever you ask them this question, they're going to give the standard answer of, I'm only concerned about bringing my best, right? Like you're not concerned about yeah. others, but it, it has to seep into your mind that given this win of the Arnold and given how it catapulted you really into that elite conversation of, you know, two, maybe three exclusive names that are going to be mentioned among the favorites, if anyone is to dethrone Chris Bumstead comes coming with that is that you now set yourself up for that opportunity to get that prime comparison on stage with Chris, Chris Bumps. So for one, there's a psychological shift that you now have heading into this Olympia, given the big win. But secondly, knowing that you know now what you just brought to the Arnold Classic and having achieved that victory, is there a ideal vision that you have for yourself in terms of whatever it is physique in terms of presentation knowing that there is going to have to be something that you're going to have to hone in on now given that you're going to be standing next to chris bumstead which has to now obviously be your ultimate goal yeah so 
the ultimate goal for me at the Olympia is to give Chris the toughest battle he's ever had so far of any year that he's, that he's been a champion at the Olympia. Because let's be honest, he has won five years in a row pretty easily. Of course, easy is a relative term, but you know the the battle. For example, I think the battle between uh, two, three, four, five would be closer than between Chris and number two. Like pretty much almost every year. Like him and Ramon, of course, were always the top two for a few years now. But even then, if they're called out by themselves, you kind of know already and see, okay, Chris is just going to take this one because some poses are just overpowering Ramon. But then I now saw the same thing with me at the uh, our classic happen too. So it gives you that psychological advantage of when I do stand next to Chris, it's going to be the... It could be the same thing happening where, yes, he has some better aspects about his physique, but people and you know almost pretty much no one can know how it really will be until we are truly next to each other, which body parts of whom will actually be exposed at that moment during the comparisons. Because when you see Chris on his own or against Ramon, you can see the strengths or weaknesses they have. But, you know, when I stand, when I stood next to Ramon, people were very surprised by some aspects about my physique they thought were not as strong, but they were actually way stronger than people thought. Like the quads, for example, mentioned right. by Tyler Mannion himself, they take up as much space as Ramon's, except my quads were even more separated. So I'm, I'm taking, I, I listened to all the feedback to really not... To, be, to try to be as objective as possible about this because it's a very subjective sport and when you're in it yourself, you're always going to be biased. Of course, you want to win and you want to do you want to give yourself the best chance like mindset-wise and motivation-wise, but I, that's why I listen to people that can be objective like my coach. He's very hard on me in terms of these are just your things you got to improve upon to beat someone like Chris. But when you hear like uh, the head judge Tyler say stuff like that about your physique and then you're seeing it yourself, you're like, I can actually, I have more, way more of a chance against these champions than I even thought myself. And that's what I will be showing at the Olympia as well. But even more important is that at the Arnold, I now saw the opening of really showing everybody who Wesley Vizzers really is. So really making myself a unique individual on that stage because people keep telling me you have a unique physique that you can't really compare to anybody else in the in the division so i'm gonna maximize that maximize the strengths that i have maximize this in the presentation in the confidence and it really is going to be a couple of steps above the arnold's presentation for sure like all the way from the individual presentation where you can do the free posing to the posing routine to the mandatory poses i'm going to be standing out in a different way than before and not in a random way but actually in a thoughtful way that makes my physique stand out in the best possible way to also really play with the audience and the competitors and the judges just kind of like Arnold used to do back in the day uh, but of course now sticking within the rules <laughs> instead of like doing a side bicep pose when you do the, right, when you have to do right, a side tricep right. for example but uh, there's a lot you can do with your presentation and your confidence on stage which puts actually a lot of people right now who are in the top 10 of the olympia get a much higher placing than their actual physique maybe should get based on their much better presentation than some other guys so it really can count towards a much higher placing so i know that chris bumstead is just an incredible athlete like i don't underestimate him or anybody else but especially chris i've uh, of course when you go into a show like this you kind of study him a bit more you got to know who you're up against and like you mentioned uh a little earlier yeah it's the cliche answer that that you have to be your best self but you know i don't want to just be my best self i just want to be the best in general on the yeah. whole stage so the only way to do that is to also know your competitors what do they do how you could how can you exploit what they do and to look better yourself because that's also a strategy you can use 
So when, yeah, like I'm not gonna give away too much, but like when someone hits a certain pose and I know that I can hit that pose as well, but maybe even better, I'm of course gonna do that right then. So stuff like that will be happening at the, at the Olympia stage. And it's just, I'm gonna, I'm, it's my real, real goal to make this Olympia a fun, exciting battle that people really want to either go for to the Olympia or watch the live stream just because of that fact that I'm going to make it and every other athlete, of course, as well, make it a very exciting show that's going to be different from the, compared to the last few years, especially uh, in Classic Physique, of course. But I think this whole Olympia will be amazing. The 60th Olympia. I think they will have a lot of stuff up their sleeve to make the show incredible. So I'm super excited uh, for it all. You know, last one. And again, I appreciate so much time that you've given us. Uh, we're sitting here a month out from the Olympia. This, I feel as if, is a different Wesley Vissers that I'm not accustomed to and certainly our audience is not going to be accustomed to because I feel as if there is a certain... Um, I don't want to just say confidence. There is a shift in attitude uh, that you're coming into yeah. the show with. I, I feel like so much of the conversation about you, Wesley Vissers, has always been about, you know, again, you're the embodiment of classic physique that, you know, the Arnold resemblances, uh, you know, this win at the Arnold against the quality of competition, I feel as if has validated you in a sense where you instantly arrived at that elite core of this classic physique division. But finally, you know, when I ask an Olympian, what is their bar for success? What would they consider a successful Olympia campaign? Many times it'll be, well, I'll be happy with top six. I'll be happy with first call up. I'll be happy to be compared, you know, with the champ or with, you know, some of the best on stage. I have to imagine if you could fill in the blank on this one, that given this win, given who you beat at this past Arnold Classic, the bar for success now has to be you're going for the gold. Obviously, you don't want to give away too much. It seems as if you, you have a game plan in mind for going up against the champ, Chris Bumstead. But the bar for success, and again, you can tell me if I'm wrong. It sounds as if you're saying the bar for success is to win the Olympia. Yes, of course, that's the ultimate goal, but it's it's not, to me, of course, I've said it uh, many Olympias, and I've thought it many Olympias when you when, you, when I'm on my cardio bike and I, I'm getting my, myself through the time. I've uh, done this many years where I just thought, I imagine myself being in that first call out and betting against Chris and that people would be surprised at, at the battle that's happening right then, that they are surprised but that it's not just an easy victory for chris but it was actually in a real battle which back then already motivated me but it was a thought experiment of how would that feel like but now i know for sure that that's just going to happen it, it, it has happened already at the at the arnold where i thought also beforehand at least when i stand next to ramon it's not going to be an easy victory for him it's at least going to be a battle and i think now the same thing for the Olympia. So I always go to these shows with multiple goals in mind. And to be honest, at the Arnold, I didn't even realistically have the goal to win. I only had the goal, okay, first, I got to beat one of those Olympians that beat me before. And second, being in the top three would have already been like the ultimate victory, basically. I didn't even think beyond that. But, it, but that goal was apparently set quite low because I won the whole show. And then again at the UK, so to really validate that victory it wasn't just a fluke it wasn't it was actually real really happening it, it was the truth so at this olympia that fact now gives me the confidence to say that i have two goals like one goal is to repeat what it did at the arnold beat everybody who was at least at the arnold which means people say about ramon he didn't really uh, look as best at the arnold which i don't entirely agree with I mean, they make it seem like he only prepped for six weeks and looked horrible. In my opinion, he looked quite good, and to be honest. Like, I'm not just saying this because I won, but I really do think he looked quite good. And Brian and even Urs, especially in the UK, looked incredible. So it's, um, I, I just want 
to beat the guys who are already beat now. So I don't want to go backwards. So that's goal number one, because that will ultimately be a validation for everybody who says, well, you want the Arnold, but the real ranking is set when you do it at the Olympia. Okay, let's, just, let's do that then. Then I would be officially the number two in the world instead of like theoretically because winning of winning the Arnold. But then my ultimate goal is, of course, um, to give Chris that battle and to actually win the show. And this, I've I've never been in this mindset before where I actually believe that that's a possibility. If I showcase my physique there, just like I did at the Arnold with a perfect peak, but with the improvements I made and this, like I'm feeling it right now as I'm as I'm saying this, this, this energetic excitement for the show that I've not had at this level before that I will take into the show and just showcase everything that I have. I think the possibility of winning that show is just there. So that is my ultimate goal, which is not just a goal in the back of my mind. It's a goal in the front of my mind. That's actually what we're going for there. So the minimal goal would be to be in that final call out and beating everybody uh, that I beat at the Arnold. But my real goal that I'm there for is of course, to win the Olympia because to be completely transparent, it would be less of an achievement to be Mr. Olympia like next year because I take the place of Chris's vacancy because maybe if he retires, the winner will be the winner because he's not there anymore. That's not right. as much as a victory as actually beating a five-time-in-a-row champion. I mean, can you imagine a bigger victory than that? Because we've seen it a little bit with uh, Ronnie Coleman and Jay Cutler, where Ronnie Coleman, of course, won, won eight times. Jay Cutler beat him, but Ronnie Coleman was on a decline. So it's different. Chris, if he shows up at his best, I don't want people to, I don't want any excuses to happen. So I don't want people to say, oh, you won because Chris was off. Oh, you won because Chris wasn't there. No, you won because you were simply better than the rest. And that is the, as a bodybuilder, that's what you really want because then you're a validated Mr. Olympia Classic Physique champion that cannot be denied. And that is, of course, the ultimate goal that you have. So I'm just being very transparent here as that's the kind of mindset that I have going into the Olympia. And then, I'm, then I also ask myself, well, why not have this mindset? I mean, this is the time to do so. You mentioned before the 60th Olympia. The momentum I have right now, I mean, the fact that I will be now taking seriously at the Olympia because of the Arnold victory, and I'm in such a good groove right now, nothing, I, I feel very good, there's nothing negative going on, like everything is set in a trajectory for success, so if there's any year I can make it happen, it would be this year, so... And then the lastly about this, some bodybuilders are afraid to have goals like this because if it doesn't happen, will you then be disappointed? Will you be depressed? Well, luckily, I'm not a person like that. I'm like, if I don't win, and that's all, that's, that's a big if, of course, because uh, that's something that's going to be happening afterwards, which we're not thinking about. But if I don't win, I can always go back and view the um footage and review okay why what's the reason then what right. can i improve what can i do better for next time and that's all that's what a body wants to do to be their best and to keep improving and that's to me the fun part about uh being a bodybuilder well wesley if you haven't already done so if the olympia hasn't already done so i think you may have just sold a few more tickets for that classic <laughs> Olympia showdown, because that is going to be an absolute battle. It is going to be yeah. a lot of fun. And look, your win at the Arnold now adds such an exciting dimension to what's already going to be an exciting lineup. Um, and obviously the storylines, Chris Bumstead, there have been so many rumors as to whether or not this is going to be his final uh, Olympia yeah. appearance. And look, he's still very much at the top of his game. Uh you coming off this win sets up such an exciting potential encounter with you and Chris Bumstead. And I remember as soon as prejudging wrapped up at the Arnold Classic, Dave uh, Dave Palumbo said that your physique, your width, gives you a set of tools that 
perhaps no other competitor that has been matched up with Chris Bumstead at the Olympia has possessed. So, mm -hmm. and I think that's a, his opinion now that we kind of sit back six months from the Arnold Classic. I think that's an opinion that's shared by so many people. So, look, this sets up perfectly. And I can honestly say, I said it again, I said it before, I'll say it again. This is a different Wesley that we're hearing from right now. This is a Wesley that is fully sure of himself that he's not only going to go and represent himself well on the biggest stage in all of bodybuilding, but now the clear goal, the clear mindset is to go against number one. And the goal is now to win that ultimate prize. So this is very refreshing to hear. It's very exciting to hear. Yeah. Um, but I did want to give you an opportunity. Again, you've been working with your coach, Stefan. You have uh, built up such an impressive brand for yourself. If you want to give some thank yous, give some shout outs, where can fans uh, view your latest with your clothing line? If they haven't, you know, if they're in the Netherlands, they haven't checked out your gym. Uh, where is your gym? What can you tell us about all these cool business ventures that you have going on yes of course since the olympia is getting pretty close we are coming out with a lot of uh, olympia signature nice. lines limited edition nice. so this is one of them more will be coming out but yeah this is what i stand for of course the golden era olympia with the golden o with of course the ultimate uh, class favorite classic physique pose right here so we have a lot of uh, olympia t-shirts and other merch on the website vintagenetics.com which i want to thank everybody who visits that website and gets something because it directly supports my journey to the olympia and i want to thank you guys in by by making the video showing the behind the scenes like at the olympia the moment i'm there every single day i'll be uploading a video to my youtube channel Wesley Vissers, or you can search it by Vintage Genetics as well. So if you're interested in seeing what somebody like me going to the Olympia, what does he do behind the scenes? How did this go? How do the check-ins go with the coach? Make sure to check out those videos. And, you know, we're posting a lot right now already. So much exciting stuff. Also at my Instagram, at Wesley Vissers, on my stories, I share every single day, kind of what I do day to day to improve myself for the Olympia. And I really want to thank also, of course, my coach, Stefan Kienzel, who is there for me every single day as well, being like the objective hero for me every day to ensure that we stay on the right path, that I don't put too much pressure on myself, being too hard on myself, and steering me in the right direction to get my shape where it needs to be. And uh, it goes without saying, I want to thank my family, obviously, for being there for me, because um winning the oral classic would have not even meant one percent of what it does now if it wasn't for them being there caring about it and sharing kind of the fruits of that labor with them because i don't care much about keeping it all for myself i want to you know give it to people around me who support me in the journey because that's what it's all about and uh, of course my you know i don't like to call it a sponsor but more yeah just the a big friendly company that helps me in my journey that supports me esn who will be actually at the olympia expo and i'll be there as well to meet and greet with the fans uh in between the pre-judging and the final so uh on saturday make sure to go to the esn uh, booth at the uh, olympia expo i've done the same thing at the r classic which uh it's incredible to be able to see the people on the day of the show itself, which I've always dreamt of, but you know, now I'm able to do that in a more controlled fashion, just one hour in and out, but at least people and me, we, we will get the opportunity to see each other. And um, yeah, but they've been supporting me so much. Um, and people who follow me, they know I love the way drip and the victory meals and the victory breakfast, which I uh, use the designer way with, for example, which I've used the day of the show at the R Classic, which should be the ultimate proof that it is uh, the victory meal. Uh, but yeah, stuff like this, I just have a very incredible tight knit team around me of several people and companies that truly help me to be the best version of myself. And I, uh, yeah, I just think it's incredible. So thank you very much, guys, for the golden support, as always. This has been so much fun because this is, you know, when we talk to certain bodybuilders, certain competitors, you can just feel the passion of the sport, the passion, the art. Uh, and when it comes to you, 
Uh, you're very unique in, again, your joy for the presentation of bodybuilding, for the history of bodybuilding. You were a student of the sport, a student of the golden era. Uh, and, and that really shines through in, in really all your words, in, in your overall image, your reflection, and obviously in the brand that you certainly built up. So we've always known that about you, but to hear this perspective from you is always so refreshing. And now to hear uh, really this champion mindset out of you is really exciting and uh i know i speak for the bodybuilding fan base when i say that couldn't be any more excited uh one month from now to see you on that olympia stage at the 60th year anniversary of the olympia you going up against one of the best if not the best to ever do it obviously in chris yeah, Bumstead, but now sure. the likes of a two-time classic with the olympia ch champion and brian uh, brian ansley the likes of uh, an Urus Kalasinski, a Ramon Dino, and not to mention a crop of young and hungry up and coming classic <laughs> physique bodybuilders. It's crazy how this division has grown, how competitive it's gotten, but you know what? That's the exciting part. And now here we have another dimension right at the top of that division. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Wesley, thank you so much for the time. And you're a month out. You've given us an hour of your time, and I couldn't be any more appreciative of you giving us this time. We wish you really. all the best, all the success in this run-up to the Olympia, and then, of course, on Olympia weekend. Thank you very much for having me. I uh, like to spend time on, uh, you know, with somebody like you who takes the sport seriously, who asks the right questions, and it gets the right message out to a lot of people. So thanks for everybody who's going to watch this video. And uh, yeah, leave a comment down below on how excited you are for the show, because I sure am. And once again, I'll do my best to make it an exciting show, because, yeah, that's what it's all about, guys. Let's have fun together. And of course, don't forget to stay golden. Man's got a deeper voice than me. I love it. <laughs> that accent <laughs> is freaking perfect. Thank Wesley you. Visitors who enters the 2024 Classic Physique Olympia showdown now as a prime favorite, a trendy favorite, as one of those that could potentially dethrone the five-time champion, Chris Bumps at Wesley Vissers. Thank you so much for the time. We'll see you in a month in Las Vegas. See you there. Thank you.